Uh, no joke this time, I will put this furnace up against any furnace you can buy. <laughs> So, I really am not kidding, um, and I know this is going to come across as boastful, as arrogant, as being a jerk, whatever. This is a nice, nice furnace. Uh, I believe it is professional, professional grade, 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 professional grade. Uh, this furnace should last me a lifetime, uh, and I, I, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to show you the furnace real quick here, and then we're going to get into the build video. I've got it down to like 10 minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. Move, 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 goes quick, but it shows you everything I did. Okay, so here's the uh, furnace finished. I've actually fired it several times, actually melted some stuff in it. So it's used now, it's not brand new. Uh, if you wanna see it brand new, go to my unveiling video, I'll show you at the end. I'm just gonna open the lid and when we come back. I'll light the thing, show you the firing and that'll be it. So let's go to the guy off camera. Okay, so this is my original furnace. It is three years old, almost to the date. Uh, I did a relining about six months into it, but it's basically the exact same construction. Made it inside a five gallon paint can and it has been working great ever since. It's just a little bit small. You can see how tight the crucible is in there. Really hardly any room to get the tongs in or the flame to go around it. Now I'm gonna reuse a lot of the same parts here. I'm gonna reuse the lifting mechanism. I'm gonna use this tray that uh, has wheels on it, reuse the burner. And this is the furnace itself. I had this cut out at a fabrication shop. I had the metal cut and rolled because there's just no way I could do it and do it as easily as they did it. It's 12 gauge steel. So it's really pretty heavy, almost an eighth of an inch. Uh, so, you know, I couldn't do it on my own. It's 16 inches in diameter and about 16 inches tall as well. It's like 410 millimeters. This is a lit up on top here. There's the bottom. It's the same 12 gauge steel. Just like the lid is, I had them cut that hole up on top. And then I had them cut this really nice vanity plate out of stainless steel that I will tack onto the, um, the lid. I tacked these nuts on just as a place to hold the lid and, and bottom on, onto the uh, uh, the sides as I was getting ready to weld them on. And you can see there's the three nuts that I welded on. Same thing going on on the bottom. The lid is just able to sit on there so I'm able to uh, support it while I'm tacking things together. <laughs> I got better as I went. <laughs> a lot of welding on this job and uh, my welding skills improved quite a bit. So I've just got the uh, cylinder clamped together and there it is, there is my, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they beautiful? Little segments. I probably should have done one long one, but I didn't. Uh, this is the bottom getting welded on or getting placed on there. Uh, you can see there's like, looks like a gap. There's really not too bad a gap. Nice, nice uh, place for me to fill with weld. As I said, a lot of welding just happens throughout this video. And some of this too, I am like a 1090. I started off like a 1090 welder, uh, that's 10% weld, 90% grind. I got a lot better though as I went along. I'm probably 50-50 now. <laughs> and now I'm gonna cut the lid off. I went ahead and welded it all together. Uh, it's kind of a box maker's trick. You make the box and you cut the lid off. Uh, that's what I've just done with the, uh, the furnace. I'm marking the vanity plate now from the back side of the lid. I need a place to be able to drill holes so that I can plug weld this thing on. And this will give me a nice indication of where the holes can be. There they are. They're not going to go through any open spots in the lid. I've got the uh, vanity plate is on the bottom now. It's, uh, where else? it's on the outside and got it clamped down. I clamped it down all the time to make sure it was good and tight. And then I'm just going to plug weld it on. There it goes, did it come off? No, it did not come off. <laughs> Good deal. 
And I line the lid as I'm going to do the furnace walls as well with kale wool. There is, this is about an inch thick kale wool. Put these stainless steel rods in to hold the kale wool and hold my refractory cement, which is going to go on top. And you just cut it out. It cuts really easily with a razor blade. There you can go. You can see the rods holding the kale wool in and the refractory will actually go around that. Now I tack welded those um, rods in there, those stainless rods. Hopefully they'll stay. I'm not real good on, ta on welding stainless, but hopefully they'll stay in there. And I struggled with this part the hardest. This is getting the tube that I was going to put the, um, that I put the, the torch into or the, the uh, burner into. And I wanted to make sure it comes in at the right tangent so that it comes inside the furnace, right up against the furnace wall. Uh, that's what I'm, it's just been a long time trying to line this thing up. Got a position now, I'm gonna to have to just set on sort of freehanding as you can sort of freehanding, freehanding this, I'm gonna cut it out and see how it fits on there. Actually fits pretty good. Not perfect fit, but again, I'm gonna weld it so it's gonna, it's good enough. But before I can weld it, I have to drill, I have to actually cut out this hole that the, the, bur uh, the burner is going to go through. So I just drilled some pilot holes, used my jigsaw and cut the, uh, cut the hole out. And there it is cut out. And we'll see how it fits. I wanted the hole to actually be a little bit larger than the pipe and it really is. So that's nice. I don't have to worry about it coming down and blocking any of the flame. I drilled three holes equally spaced around this thing and welded nuts on so that I can put thumb screw screw it to tighten the burner down. There's the thumb screw and the nut. Uh, we'll get it tightened down. You'll see that it comes through on the inside. So it'll tighten against that burner. I'm just gonna tack this guy in place. And then I need to draw it up a little bit closer there. And we'll tack it again, hold it, hold it where it needs to be. This is the trolley from the old furnace. Uh, we need to make it bigger. So it'll get bigger right here. There it is. <laughs> and I'm, glue, I'm welding handles on because it's starting to get heavy. Put fire brick in the bottom. You can see I cut them out with a wet tile saw. There they are in the bottom of the uh, furnace. I'm gonna fill in the gaps with the refractory cement. Now here's the refractory cement. I used 3200 degree, that's 3200 degrees Fahrenheit or 1760, I think, centigrade uh, or Celsius. You mix it very, very dry. Uh, it's amazing how dry this gets mixed. And it just gets pressed. It's a rammable refractory, so you don't pour it in. You have to press it in, you have to kind of pound it in. And that's kind of what I'm doing with this trowel. I'm just gonna press it down. Uh, got a nice clean finish on the lid. And hopefully those rods will just hold it in place forever and ever. Then I decided, oh, well, I had a bunch left over, so let's go ahead and do the bottom as well. And I actually poured a little bit too much in here. You'll see me here in a second, scoop some out. But again, it's kind of just press it in there, keep pressing and pressing. It's a, it's a refractory that you want to ram down in there. Took a lot more than that out of here. All right, so the bottom is all pressed down in there, nice and smooth. I had more left over, so I thought, well, I better go ahead and do the sides. I wasn't really prepared to do it yet, but I went ahead and put the sides in. So this kale wool is wrapped in there. You can see the form, uh, and I'm pouring the uh, refractory down around the sides. I end up with about three quarters of an inch of refractory all the way around this thing. And I'm going to use a stick that's actually three quarters of an inch wide, there it is, to ram this down in there. So I'm ramming it as I fill, making sure it's down and nice, tight, nice and tight uh, against the form. And you can see how much space I have now between the refractory, between the form wall and the kale wall. And there it is finished off, uh, refract about the same amount on top, about three quarters of an inch up on top. I brought it in the house because it was really, really cold. Uh, for a few nights, so I wanted it to not freeze. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this uh, form out of here. It actually came out really easy. I just kind of pulled on it. 
and was able to wrap it up on itself and then just take it out of the, the furnace. There you go, that paper unfortunately stuck in there. And as I said, this thing is getting heavier by the minute, <laughs> hard to lift, trying to get the dumb thing in the uh, trolley by myself. It was, uh, it was a job. There we go. Okay, we're starting to put the uh, lifting mechanism on. It's just a tube welded to the side of the furnace with a steel rod that will go up and down inside there. I've got the, weld, uh, the rod welded to the lid. And that lever at the bottom will lift the lid. You can see it coming up there as I just press down on it. Now, I did not put a tube in for my refractory cement, so I'm having to cut it out with a diamond tip hole saw. It actually worked pretty well. The chuck fit inside the tube, so I was able to get the entire thing cut out of there really pretty easily. And there it is. There's the lid opening on its own. The furnace is pretty much done at this point, except that I want to put the ceramic coating on it. And this is something called Frank Coat. Uh, the jury's still out on this stuff. I don't know if it's going to be the right stuff or not, but I went ahead and lined it. You do five parts powder to six parts water, and that's by weight. So five parts powder, six parts water by weight. And then you mix it up, and the guys at the, the factory, the place I bought it from, just said, yeah, that's what you start with, and then you add more water and shit to make it however you want. <laughs> okay. I get it all stirred up now, I've mixed. I'm just gonna paint it on, I'm painting it on the lid uh, and I'll paint the entire furnace with it as well. We got everything coated now, the uh, lid is completely covered. I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. And now I'm doing a second coat. Uh, this stuff, I put two coats on both the furnace and on the lid. I can tell you it's holding up pretty well, but it's, I guess it's working, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's still on the furnace walls and it hasn't come off. There we go. Now that's without forced air. If I turn on the air, there you go. So this is my number six crucible. Yeah, number six, number, or I'm sorry, number four crucible. You can see how much room I have there. Tons of room. I can melt that thing full of aluminum. Fif 15 minutes from the time I turn the furnace on to the time I pour. 15 minutes. Here's a number eight crucible. Much larger, much larger in size. Still got plenty of room in there for a larger furnace, for a larger crucible. So, yay. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Um, I kind of chopped up a little bit, I understand, but you know, I tried, I had two hours of, about two hours of video over a two week period to try to stitch together for you. Eh, I did the best I could do. All right. <laughs> I think you got the gist of it. I think you got, you got everything you need to know. If you wanted to build a furnace like this one, you, you, you've got everything you need in there. So that's it. You know, normally I've got a customary close. I'm going to change it up going from this point forward. Uh, we're going to say two things to you every video. First one, be a blessing to somebody. I don't care who it is. Do something for somebody. Be a blessing to them. Encourage them. Do something nice for them. And the other one is, as always, have a great day.